This never-ending debt cycle will bankrupt BC's public utility in the future, leaving its existing assets vulnerable to be taken over by private interests. This process clearly threatens BC's energy security. They're extraordinarily valuable assets. They were built at some cost, both to the environment and at the time in, in dollar terms. They'll effectively be lost. Another key change to BC Hydro came through a secretive deal which came into effect in 2003 that saw 1,500 Hydro employees shunted to a brand new BC subsidiary of multinational consulting giant Accenture. Formed from the ashes of Anderson Consulting, Accenture officially split from Arthur Anderson in 1999 just prior to its parent company's spectacular collapse with Enron in the largest corporate fraud case in U.S. history. The jobs in question include customer care and call center operations, accounting, IT services and other important functions within BC Hydro. The Canadian Office and Professional Employees Union, who represents the affected workers, was neither consulted nor informed of the changes until they were made official, and has been kept in the dark on the particulars of the deal ever since. It was done by the provincial government, but not through the legislature. Members of the opposition haven't seen it. I suspect many members of sitting MLAs have not seen it. It is protected and shrouded in secrecy, despite the fact that it's 100% funded by taxpayers' money. With a private corporation controlling one-third of BC Hydro's jobs and key strategic operations from within, with little to none of the transparency expected of a crown corporation, the drive to privatize is operating on multiple fronts. I think our role here is a broader role than just speaking for our members. We're, we're speaking for the communities that our members and their families live in. Our goal is to talk to a million British Columbians before the next provincial election and get them engaged at some level. The major push for privatization began in 2001 on the heels of Gordon Campbell's campaign promise to keep public the jewel of BC's crown corporations. The first shot came in the form of a position paper submitted by Alcan, now in the hands of foreign mining titan Rio Tinto, to Campbell's newly minted Energy Policy Review Task Force. The fingerprints of Alcan and other similarly minded corporations and industry lobbies are all over the task force's final recommendations, which would go on to become the BC Energy Plan. The report is a lobbyist dream, a perfect reflection of private interest to take control of BC's rivers and public energy assets while securing guaranteed private wealth, all disguised as good public policy. But some of the shocking recommendations highlighted in the report are surprisingly brazen and clearly show the underpinnings of a massive industry-led transformation of BC energy policy, which utterly dismisses the public's interests. Alcan, who in 1950 was given access to the Nechaco River in northwestern BC to produce power to create aluminum jobs, now wanted a free market approach to energy and the right to break its commitments and reap huge profits from power sales. The Alcan-led BC Energy Plan, which became official in 2003, opened the floodgates to a host of other private power companies. Hundreds of private power licenses were soon handed out and the first companies out of the gate began applying to build facilities and win lucrative deals with BC Hydro. With Bill 30 in place and a totally inadequate environmental assessment process, there has been little to stand in the way of these projects. This gold rush is of concern because the government isn't looking at the cumulative impacts. In the case of the Accenture move, the standard argument of cost savings from corporate efficiency, not surprisingly, hasn't panned out. And this should not be a surprise. If we track the record of Accenture and some of these other privatization deals across this continent, there's case after case after case that there are not cost savings. Another government peddled myth is that BC's choice to import some energy is a threat to self-sufficiency. We're in a bit of a fool's rush. Uh, we call it the gold rush here. We've got an artificial crisis being created. We produce enough power for our needs. The population is told that uh, we're importing energy. Well, we import energy because we can. It's very profitable to us to do that. Indeed, BC chooses to import a small amount of its energy at bargain rates while selling power back to its neighbors at lucrative spot market prices. 
Setting aside the fact that BC doesn't actually need to import power today, the government has concocted a false argument that private power is needed to reduce BC's importing of non-green electricity. It has used British Columbians' justifiable concerns over global warming to trade away wilderness for private power. This recent editorial in the Vancouver Sun by respected ecologist Dr. Craig Orr pulled back the green curtain on ecologically destructive private river power. A critique of Dr. Orr's article came the following week in the Sun from one Steve Davis, president of private power lobby the Independent Power Producers Association of BC, and as this 2003 document shows, vice president of Leadcore Power, owner of no less than 18 of these private river power licenses. In his article, Davis trumpeted the well-worn and misleading mantra of his industry that private river power is the magical solution to BC's importing of dirty power. While a portion of the small amount of power BC imports doesn't come from green sources, the ecological cost of BC's new energy plan, gravely endangering fish, bears and other wildlife, clear-cutting carbon-absorbing trees and destroying valuable ecotourism destinations, make this a trade-off British Columbians and their environment can ill afford. In this time of global warming and shrinking natural resources, maintaining control of water, for life and as a clean energy source may be the most important challenge facing the people of BC today. Let's produce clean green energy, that's the way to go. That's the only way to go, but we need to do it right. Another irony of this new private river power is that it becomes available in spring, the precise time of year when BC needs it least. And the idea that these deals will guarantee long-term energy self-sufficiency for BC is a myth. At the end of these private power deals, which range from 20 to 40 years, BC Hydro no longer has exclusive access to that power. The producer is able to sell it anywhere in North America at whatever the market will bear, and owns the facility and can renew the river license in perpetuity. That's right. The BC government gives away the public's rivers for free and gets them to finance the facilities and commit to purchase the power from them at exorbitant rates. And at the end of that process, the private company owns the river rights and the infrastructure and can sell their power to whomever they want for whatever they want forever. That's the BC Energy Plan in a nutshell. By 2030, we may be in a desperate situation where we're having our power prices uh, established in California because we're having to meet the California price in order to buy power that's produced on our rivers that are a public asset. With a several year head start thanks to government secrecy and hundreds of billions of dollars at stake, it's clear British Columbians face a great challenge to stop the juggernaut of private power. But awareness is building quickly now as ignorance turns to disbelief and disbelief to outrage. People would say to me, well, I don't believe that. Why would the BC government give away the production of clean green energy to the private sector? And why would they um, essentially be privatizing streams and rivers that people just, it didn't make sense. Once people get over that disbelief, the next thing they say is, what can I do to help? These private water power licenses, ripping them up and getting them off of the rivers would probably be a wonderful way to celebrate the beginning of this century that we as a collective multicultural society were able to do what they say we couldn't do. It's not too late for the people of British Columbia to take back their rivers and take back their power. W.A.C. Bennett built the best public power utility in the world by having the courage and vision to make B.C.'s hydro energy public. British Columbians can demand the cancellation of the B.C. Energy Plan and Accenture contract, reject private power, and maintain exclusive public benefit from historic and future sources of renewable public energy. Join us at www.saveourrivers.ca for more of Power Play, a multi-part series exposing the theft of BC's rivers.